Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is a reading from the 15th chapter of Exodus. Then Moses ordered Israel to set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. That is why it is called Marah. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried out to the Lord. The Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he put them to the test. He said, if you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give heed to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will not bring upon you any of the diseases that I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees, and they camped there by the water. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month, after they had departed from the land of Egypt, the whole congregation of Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on, the, on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what we are, for what are we, that you complain against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and you fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 119, verses 1 through 24, on page 763 of the prayer book. We'll read it responsively by half verse. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts, who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. 
You lay down your commandments. That we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct. That I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame. When I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart. When I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By keeping to your words. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart. That I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. With my lips will I recite. All the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees. Than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments. And give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant. That I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see. The wonders of your law. I am a stranger here on earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times. With longing for your judgments. You have rebuked the insolent. Cursed are they who stray from your commandments. Turn from me shame and rebuke. For I have kept your decrees. Even though the rulers sit and plot against me. I will meditate on your statutes. For your decrees are my delight. And they are my counselors. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May only God's word be spoken, and may only God's word be heard. Amen. Amen. I find it somewhat interesting that in the daily office lectionary, following Easter, during Easter tide, suddenly we find ourselves in our Old Testament readings back in Exodus, in the wilderness. Didn't we just come through Lent and come through our time in the wilderness? Why is it that in Eastertide, we're back there again? I'm not exactly sure, but I have a hunch. And my hunch is this. I believe that what we experience as post-Easter Christians, as a people 
living into the resurrection. We find ourselves in a wilderness not unlike the wilderness the children of Israel encounter in Exodus. I believe, in fact, that liberation itself can sometimes feel like a wilderness. What I see happening in Exodus is this people who have just witnessed and been a part of a divine act of liberation unlike anything the world had seen before. And having crossed through the Red Sea on dry land, they find themselves liberated and yet they don't know what liberation means. It's not what they're used to. So they have to learn. They have to learn some pretty tough lessons about who they are. They have to learn who this God that they're following is. And ultimately, they have to learn who they are, a people transformed by their relationship with the God they are following. Now, looking at this Exodus story, I see, I see two big things happening, two big lessons that the people in Israel are learning about themselves, about God, and about who they can be if they allow themselves to be transformed and liberated by this God. So our first incident happens when they're out there in the wilderness and they're thirsty. And they start to complain. And they come upon some water, but the water is bitter. They don't like it. They don't want that bitter water. And man, do they whine and do they give Moses some trouble. Now, out of all of this, God suddenly provides a really bizarre solution. He says, throw this piece of wood in the water and it'll turn sweet. That's really strange. I don't think we need to pretend like that's not strange because I think it was strange for them back then just like it is for us now. But Moses does it. We throw the wood in the water and suddenly the water is transformed. It's made sweet. And God says, look, this is who I am. If you follow me, I'm the God who can make the bitter water sweet. But if you don't, if you turn away from me, if you turn your face back toward Egypt and toward the way things have always been, back to whatever craving for that old normalcy you had before you were in this wilderness, if you turn your face back to Egypt, you face sickness, you face death. So you'd best keep walking into this wilderness and following me. Now, I see a second thing happening, and there's this incident with the bread, right? They're in the wilderness. They're hungry. And the people say, my goodness, there's no food out here. This God's not taking care of us. I'm ready to go back to the way things were. I'm ready to go back into Egypt. I had lots of good food in Egypt. Times were so great back in the good old days in Egypt. Let's just turn. Go back. Go back to the way things were. It's as if they've forgotten that the way things were was not so great. The way things were was killing them in body, in mind, and in spirit. And yet here they are so quick wanting to go back just because they miss the food they think they remember getting in Egypt. What happens in this moment is intriguing to me because it seems that God basically points out to them that they're sort of setting up a false choice for themselves. They're sitting here in this wilderness and they're saying, our only choice is to go back to the way things were as soon as possible 
or starve and die in this wilderness. And what does God do? God says, no. There's another way. There's a way of life. There's a way in which I can provide. If you'll follow me, if you will follow in my ways, I'll make sure that everybody has enough food to sustain them for this journey. Follow me and everyone can be fed. You don't have to choose what was back in Egypt because what was back in Egypt was sickness and death. Follow me through this wilderness and we can find a new way forward into life. So here we are, Christians, in a wilderness that none of us imagined even a few weeks ago. And yet I think that we're having the same difficulty that the people that the children of Israel did. There are cries and longings in our heart to go back as quickly as possible to what was normal back then, to the old way of doing things. Let's get back to life as usual. And I understand that because there are things I miss too. For one thing, I miss people being in these seats in front of me. Although I do have Jim and I appreciate that. <laughs> there is so much I miss about life before all of this. But I also see that we're being presented with some choices that might be false choices, like the choices that the children of Israel thought they were facing. And we might have an invitation from God to go deeper into the wilderness and find a new way. Is the choice really go back to Egypt and die? Or is there an invitation to follow the resurrected Christ? To follow the God of life, love, and liberation into a new promised land that we weren't able to imagine back on the other shore. I wonder. Amen. Amen. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. I pray for all members of this parish. I pray for all health care workers, all first responders. I pray for all those who feel that today they are facing some very difficult choices. I ask your prayers for Lorraine and for Bill. Both are in the hospital. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life. 
and have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill sympathy, and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders you have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your light, we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. The Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all who put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense, and make you know and feel that the only name under heaven given for help and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, if you're at home and... You would like to receive healing prayers. Obviously, I can't lay my hands on you from here, but you might be with someone who you could lay your hands on. You can even lay your hands on yourself as I pray this prayer. I lay my hands on you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, beseeching him to uphold you and fill you with his grace, that you may know the healing power of his love. Amen. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.